Hey everyone, TV Shore's back. It's still June the 26th, 2015. I wanted to try to get one more video in for the day. Um, I'm going to have a time getting all these loaded, but I hope that it's been well worth it for you. It has been for me. Okay, what I want to point out here, in 2 Kings chapter 16, here we see uh, reign of Ahaz over Judah. In verse 3, the thing I want to point out here it says, But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, yea, and made his sons to pass through the fire. Okay, we already talked about how he gave his firstborn as a sacrifice to this deity that was being worshipped at this time. And what I wanted to better understand here it says he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. And I wanted to better understand what that meant. And so I found this website. It's very interesting. You can go back in scripture and read of how these kings of Israel ruled. And um, we see a clear picture of why God was so unhappy with Israel. Because they kept focusing on these false gods, on these deities, on these the fallen. Um, Satan and, and the fallen. That, that's what this boils down to. Because remember the scripture told us. That it was the gods. God wanted them to turn away from the gods on the other side of the flood. And, and we know what we've learned. Most of us have learned about the time of Noah. It was a time of wickedness. Great wickedness. That's why God brought the flood to destroy everything. And it had to do with how that the fallen had took to themselves the daughters of man and they had four sons to them and those were the giants of those days and it was all about how they had corrupted um, everything in that time. So, you know, the scripture clearly pointed us to um, the gods on the other side of the flood and the gods of Egypt. So we understand that these were the false deities. It was the fallen and, and the children, their offspring. <coughs> and we see this throughout time. It's just people have been blinded. Satan has blinded people to understanding this still goes on. He has blinded people. When, when the Lord shook Nepal, the Lord told me that, that that he was making a statement with that. His shaking had begun. He was bringing down the high places. And then he led me to go on about explaining this and how uh, we can see that in the United States. And, you know, that's like I said before, it's just the tip of the iceberg. It's everywhere. But he had me to focus on the United States and Manhattan, how Satan has corrupted things and how he has mimicked the word of God in things so that we could clearly understand in this modern day where, where a lot of us have our heads buried and we don't think of the things of the Lord and we certainly do not have our minds open to what Satan is implementing around us. So with all that being said, I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you this link because you can see for yourself. I'm just going to show you here. Um, about the ways of the kings of Israel. Now here we see Saul was the first appointed king. Then David. Wait a minute. I'm trying to get that glare off there. Then Solomon. After Solomon there was a split. Okay. Then we had separately kings of Israel and kings of Judah. Alright. When we get to Ahaz. Right here he is. I want us to look at how he, and th the thing I like about this website, let me show you, is whoever created this did a rating on these kings. And I want to show you the kings of Israel. Here's the whole list. And you can go look at this. But what I want to show you about this list is how these kings were rated. And this is how they would be rated, <coughs> excuse me, as to how they followed the things of God. Look at this. Bad, extra bad, worse, bad mostly. I mean, all the way to the bottom, there was not one good king of Israel. 
not one godly king of Israel. And that's what is being referred to here in the scriptures. They followed after these deities, these false gods, the fallen and their offspring, okay? Um, when we get down here to the kings of Judah, okay, there's the list. Okay, and then we, we're going to go back up to Ahaz here. There's Ahaz. Okay, I'm going to point him out here. They've got him rated as wicked. Okay, do you see that? Ahaz was a wicked ruler of Judah. Okay, when we look at the rating of all of them, we see most bad mostly, good, good, bad, bad, devilish. Let me see who that was. Devilish. Oh, I see. That's something I need to do some homework on. Uh, good mostly, good mostly, good, wicked, bad, worse. So we see there were some good. There were some that followed the Lord. But we see that Ahaz is the only one who was listed as wicked, which is the very word that the Lord used in the day of Noah as to why the flood would take place was because of the wickedness. Okay, the wickedness in the land. So we see that Ahaz was the only one that was wicked. And the scripture tells us he followed after the ways of the kings of Israel. And when we looked at the kings of Israel, let me see if I can back off and get all that in there, their names and their rating. We see that they were all bad. The very best of them was mostly bad. Okay, mostly bad. Bad and mostly bad is the very best of the kings of Israel. So we see that the kings of Israel did not follow after the ways of the Lord. And that's what God's trying to get us to understand here about Ahaz. And why it is important that we, we understand the time of Ahaz and the time of uh, Hezekiah. Hezekiah's time was a time of cleansing, a time of removing all the wickedness that had been set up. And that will be when our Lord Jesus comes. Okay? That will be when our bridegroom and our king, he comes. We are in the time of Ahaz right now. We are fixing to move into the time of Hezekiah. And that's what I wanted to point out with this video. And we'll look into some of these things later in the following videos. But i got to get all these loaded first. I love y'all. I hope somehow this, this is a blessing to you and a help to you. Um... We, we're leaving here soon, but we have got to stay focused on the Lord because there's a lot of wickedness, a lot of evil, a lot of darkness that we're, I'm afraid that we're going to have to be here for some of this. It won't be for long, but we have to be ready even for a short period of it. We have to be centered in the Lord. We have to understand the craftiness of the enemy. I love you. Bye-bye.